Hi and welcome to this video. This is an introduction of a video that I've shot about, about 18 years ago today, this is 2021, uh, 20 years ago, and that's basically a recording of everything that I've done to locate the large catfish in, in Southern Africa, uh, the research I've done, uh, all the technical tech talk, the stuff that people ask me till today, every day, where to catch the big catfish, how to catch them, what the terminal tackle looks like, what rods to use, what strength of line to use, and all of that. So so sit back and enjoy uh, the tech talk, and if there's any other uh, information that you require, please leave it in the comments or on my Facebook page and so on, but sit back and enjoy the catfish tech talk video. For almost three decades, I've been photographing and fishing South Africa's beautiful and wild places. Me and my boys have been doing fishing films and capturing wildlife and landscape photographs for about the same time. Captain, you hooked the love! <laughs> for this series, I've dusted off my old footage and revisited some of the old spots. To do that, I had to open my photo and fishing diaries. concentrate on this video in uh, catching the large catfish or the specimen catfish um, what they call and specifically in South Africa or Southern Africa to catch these catfish one need to go to extremes to actually locate them it is thus important that one have a very good topographical map this one specifically have um, the 500,000 and 250,000 to one um, maps the um, a reason for this is that you can locate where waterfalls are down the river if you don't know the river, if you need to explore new territory. Um, there's, it also identifies where, the, where there's little shops, small little shops, um, farm dwellings, etc. Um, that can indicate whether there's any pollution, if there's any agricultural activities where there could be pollution. Um, it can also show where there's um, deep holes, steep embankments where the water is warm, where the water is cool, where the deep holes are and, um, and also where the pressure is not so much on the fish the lower the, populated, uh, the population for instance the, the greater the population of fish would be specifically in the area that I, that I catch on the Namibian border further and because we need to go to the extremes to catch this, cat, catch this catfish we need to um, be kitted out for emergencies and, and um, be prepared for, for long periods of, of fishing. I would have typical catfish rods, this, uh, being the ECAT or Berkeley ECAT rod specifically designed for catfish, and the Quantum Big Cat rod in the 40 pound and 80 pound range to cover for the huge ones in the rivers. I would have a typical tripod setup for specimen carp with the alarms and the volumes to the alarms and also indicators that would show backbiting. I would furthermore have a fish finder to be able to identify the type of surface um, area, the obstacles below the water and where the deep uh, big cats are lying specifically. I'd have a, a scale that would be calibrated before the trip to ensure that these records that you catch is indeed and in true records not like the majority of records that are registered these days I'll have a variety of sinkers uh, depending on the strength of the river this is a specific uh, 18 ounce sinker very large and um, 
in very strong rapids I would for instance hook all these weights. I will hook these uh, weights up with a thinner piece of line to ensure should they hook up to the bottom that the fish is not damaged the sinkers can, can break off but the fish can come out. I would also have a GPS to identify and locate the pools and the the holding areas of the large fish um, to be able to identify um, productive areas for the next year. I would have binoculars to in the afternoon and the morning locate the rises of, of the catfish and where they are, are being held. I'll have um, 80 pound uh, strand monofilament uh, filament fishing line. Um, this is one of my favorites. Uh, one can actually detect them in um, long distances. I would uh, sometimes drop the bait up to 400 500 meters down river so one would require quite a substantial amount of, of line. I would take a stronger tournament ICFA class 130 pound line for my terminal tackle to ensure that I don't lose the large ones. I'll have a variety of, of cat foods um, as an attractant. I would furthermore have a fishing bag that would be as light as possible but still have all the nooks and crannies and all the funny little goodies that one would require to bring the catfish out. I would have a what I call a essential essential bag and in this bag um, I can be contained for up to two weeks time inclusive of food, um, fire, medics etc. I would have a goodie bag. The goodie bag would have cable ties, it will have spare batteries, it will have spare camera batteries, it will have dust offs for the camera gear, it will have operating manuals of GPS's of flash lights for cameras etc. We'll go into that detail later. I will have a rough top bag where I will have things in like camouflage nets to be able to cover my camping site or to cover my raft for ecological purposes. Now in my utility or the fishing bag that I take with on the raft obviously the um, support vehicles will have um, crates full of specific uh, gear or fill up gear like additional line, additional hook, additional sinkers and so on but the bag um, I will keep with me on the raft or and on each raft would be um, would be would have um, would be of, of this size typical bass bag it will have a small container that would have a few hooks a few of the necessities to be able to um, quickly change um, for instance circle hooks number 12 circle hooks which we use quite a lot a variety of beads color beads um, for instance the rubber bead the typical specimen carp rubber bead would be to protect um, the knots against abrasion from the sinkers and so on. There will be a variety of three point swivels that I'll explain later. I will also have um, the live bait hooks where uh, the typical C snap swivel where the live bait can be snapped onto the line and then sank back into the um, where the weight is. Obviously in South Africa it's against the law to catch with um, live bait which is debatable although all my catfish is going back it's everything strictly catch and release I would have um, for sport in the evening I would have artificial lures for the lightweight uh, bass gear I would have um, the big tiger MIPS spinners in the shallows or in the rapids there's a variety of the normal uh, swivel and also the strong 140, 180 pound, pound ball bearing swivel that I used in, in uh, salt water these days. 
a variety of smaller hooks, grub, lead, weight, lead, uh, lead heads, funny goodies like this that I link to the line. If for instance I cannot fish, fish straight across the river I would send the, the line along the, back, the side of the bank where I fish. I would put this onto a tree, I'll slide the line through and then put the line 90 degrees across the river where there's less obstacles. I would then fight the fish not back over the obstacles but straight away towards this swivel say about 200 meters on my side of the bank and then run towards the fish and unclip the the, um, the goodie and uh, I don't quite know what they use this for in any case piece of engineering equipment. There's a normal rattle grub used for um, for bass that we use very successfully for the smaller cats. Um, we do ones like these with pork, um, guinea fowl feathers that are quite large with 12-0 and 15-0 weight um, ach, um, um, hooks. Pieces of line string to tie the reels or the rods to the to the um, axle tripods or to the trees and then the rods to the the reels to the rods and then a variety of, of hooks. This would be a small a typical small box or support box or uh, that would go on one of the one of the rafts that would go from the main camp across the river to fish for say an hour or two. I would have the, the normal floats to um, catch either the small cats or just to indicate what's happening on the line. The bait will lie straight down. This would lie 90 degrees up on the surface. It's not, uh, it actually just indicates where the, where the bait is lying because this will also flow down river. If you're sitting on that side it will flow down river and it will stay on top of the, of the bait. So showing you any movement, a finer movement that you can't detect because the line is 500, 600 meters away from the tripod. There's a variety of the the typical gear that that used for carp, for instance, the lead lead wire comes in handy where there's also crabs and st uh, crabs and um, anything that could damage the line at the terminal side of the tackle. Typical lead core wire, strong that lies on the bottom. A variety of um, small little split shot sinkers. There's also the um, shrink tube, heat shrink tube that we use to protect the um, knots and so on, rubber beads, there's also the typical lead weight putty that we use, the same as the specimen carp guys.